Hi and welcome to the movie summary.com and today we are going to be talking about the summary of the House of the Dragon episode 4. Let's start. This episode is called The King of the Narrow Sea. The episode started with Princess Rhaenyra in a dark castle, listening to different lords in different houses, pitching themselves to choose them as her husband. There are men who are older than her father and others, little boys. The choosing ended up with bloody and deadly fight among men and the princess just left with no interest to any of them at all. The princess then sailed back to the king's landing, worried about her father may be mad at her since she doesn't found any husband in her liking yet, since the king made an effort in arranging this tour for her. Before they can reach the land, Daemon's dragon appeared that somehow hit their ship. Princess Rhaenyra looked happy seeing his dragon, for she knew Prince Daemon has arrived in King's Landing. Back in the King's Landing, the king is preparing his day in the throne. People gathered around upon the arrival of Prince Daemon, bringing the weapon of Prince Drehor, the leader of Triarchy. He told the king to add the weapon to the chair of the throne. There was tense at first between the king and the prince, but they ended up hugging each other. They are brothers after all. Damon was wearing a crown for after defeating Dreyhor in Stepstones, he was named the King of the Narrow Sea. But he proclaimed that his crown belongs to the king. The kingdom held feast for Prince Damon's victory. Meanwhile, Princess Rhaenyra's time being away also reconciled her relationship with Queen Alicent. They missed each other. The council is having a meeting about Lord Corlys' disappointment against the king for refusing to help him about the matters with crab feeders as well as refusing the marriage of the king and their daughter Lady Lena. It is her that Lord Corliss is making an arrangement with one of the lords of the free cities to marry his daughter, Lady Lena, to the sea lord's son. This could spark an alliance of House Valyrian with the free cities, and that could be a problem. But this issue can be solved by making a marriage pact between House Valyrian and House Targaryen. After the council meeting, the princess head back to her chamber. She saw a bag with clothes for a boy. Then she found a map showing the secret passage from her chamber. There she opened the secret door and went down. She was dressed like a boy to disguise her identity as the princess. On the other side, Prince Damon, her uncle, was waiting for her. He then brought her to the place that the royal shouldn't go. The princess was very amused as it is very far from the living that she is in. She got to see the world outside the palace. They went to different places until Damon brought her to the house of pleasure, teaching her that even if she's a royal and is wed to someone, she can still do whatever she pleases and desired. There, she seduced the princess and tried to break her purity, but as we know, Damon is suffering from, so it was not successful. He left the princess alone. The princess left in question trying to find Prince Damon, but he is nowhere to be found. She then went back to her chamber, and it surprised her Kristen Cole as he didn't see the princess come out of her chamber. She then tricked Sir Kristen Cole to join her in her chamber, and there she seduced the knight and they spent the night together, breaking her purity. At that same night, the boy reported to Sir Otto that he saw the princess coming out of the house of pleasure following her uncle Damon. This news shocked Sir Otto. In the morning, Damon was found in his horse place, drunk, sick, and asleep. She attended Damon while she is handing money to a boy, the same boy who reported to Sir Otto about the princess and Damon in the house of pleasure. Sir Otto's having a hard time breaking the news to the king about the lascivious act of the princess and his brother, but he managed to tell the king. The king's very furious and got very angry, demanding him that whoever spread this rumor, his tongue should be cut and he should be killed. His anger then turned to Sir Otto, saying that he's trying to conspire his family. Queen Alicent was happened to be there. She overheard all the conversation. The princess was summoned by the queen, asking her honesty about the matter. The princess denied it. She did admit that it almost happened, but Damon abandoned her before it happened. She assured the queen that she is still pure, and the queen believed her. Damon, still drunk sick, was summoned by the king. There he confronted his brother about the thing with Princess Rhaenyra. He didn't deny it, but he did not tell the whole story. 
The king is very worried that no lords will ever accept the princess if she's not pure anymore. Damon then suggested that the king should marry them, him and Princess Rhaenyra. He said that he'll take Princess Rhaenyra as she is as a wife. It made the king more angry. He said that Damon didn't last for his daughter, but for the throne. He exiled Damon back to the vale where his wife is. The king has already given him up. In the king's chamber, the queen defended Princess Rhaenyra. She believed that the princess is telling the truth. The king then summoned the princess. He reminded her that her responsibility as the future king is higher than her desires. The king then made a final decision that the princess Rhaenyra should marry Prince Laner, Lord Corlys' son. With their dragons and the House of Valyrian's navy, they will stand stronger. The princess promised the king to do her duties for marriage, but she reminded the king that he must also act as a king. She put some sense to the king that his hand, Sir Otto Hightower, is manipulating him and is doing the things according to his advantage. She insisted that the king must do something about him. She believed that Sir Otto Hightower is spying on her and doing everything to remove her claim to the throne. The king then summoned Sir Otto Hightower and started talking about the past, at the time of King Jaehaerys reign. He mentioned about the death of his father five days after he became the hand of the king. Balin, the heir of the Iron Throne, King Jaehaerys' son, died because of the burst belly. Not to mention these two people, great and mighty. After these happenings, Sir Otto Hightower became the hand of the king, the second most powerful man in the realm. Then King Viserys told Otto his suspicions about Sir Otto's greed of power, stating the fact that sending Lady Alison to his chamber to keep his company when his first wife died. The king mentioned that he realized at late how Sir Otto Hightower planned everything. He then fired Sir Otto as his hand. The last part of the show shows Grand Maester Melus bring a specialty to Princess Rhaenyra, saying that he made it carefully himself as what the king instructed him. He said it is to avoid undesirable consequences of what she's done. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please support this channel by clicking the subscribe button. See you in the next episode!